Will you take the Johnson and Johnson vaccine? Good evening and thanks for joining us tonight. I'm Steve Price and I'm Alicia Summers. Catholics are facing some conflicting messages this Sunday about whether to get the Johnson and Johnson coronavirus vaccine. The county will start distributing it this week. News 8's Brandon Lewis explains the debate and why some bishops are telling parishioners to consider a different vaccine if they have a choice. Steve and Alicia, on the surface, it can sound like some bishops are advocating against taking the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, but it requires a little bit more historical context to understand exactly what they're trying to say and why it goes beyond just this one vaccine. Catholics may be hearing mixed messages about whether to get Johnson & Johnson's coronavirus vaccine. We're going to explain this from a science and a religious perspective to help you make an informed decision. The discussion often starts with abortion, but it's not that simple. It's really about something called fetal cell lines. It's derived from an abortive fetus from the Netherlands in the 1970s. This one, this one cell line happens to be really easy to get DNA and, you know, all the stuff that you need to express into the cell. The line is grown in a lab thousands of times over and used in vaccines from hepatitis A to Ebola. All three coronavirus vaccines used cell lines in development, but only Johnson & Johnson uses it in manufacturing. The Catholic Church has spoken out against what it calls the manipulation of humans for decades, and the U.S. Conference of Bishops this month argues Catholics should opt for Moderna or Pfizer's vaccines if they have a choice. But the Vatican has noted for years, quote, the use of such vaccines does not constitute formal cooperation with the abortion from which the cells used in production of the vaccines derive, unquote. Basically, it's okay to get the Johnson & Johnson vaccine, but the church is urging pharmaceuticals to think differently in a broader sense. The concrete moral question of this moment is in Catholic theology, uh, is it morally appropriate and in fact, uh, morally a very good thing to take any one of these three vaccines now to bring immunity to the whole of the of the society and the answer quite clearly at all levels is yes. Some county sites will start getting the Johnson & Johnson vaccine this week, but of course, as we've seen, delays can happen and that's why the church says just get any available vaccine that's offered to you. Stephen Alicia. Brandon, thank you. And some San Diegans have already received the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. A CVS in San Marcos is among the pharmacies that gave it out this weekend. And the San Diego Fire Rescue Department is taking appointments for that vaccine, which it plans to start giving out later this week. Now, they're going to be administering the single-dose vaccine at the Municipal Gymnasium at Balboa Park. They say appointments Tuesday through Thursday have already filled up. There were still a few open times on Friday, but we do hear those are going fast. Other slots may come open if people cancel. We have the sign up link at CBS8.com. Just click on the help button. Meantime today, the vaccination superstation in Del Mar reopened after a vaccine shortage, but now four county sites will be again temporarily closed tomorrow. Those sites are Linda Rhodes Rec Center in Vista, Border View YMCA in Otay Mesa, the Lemon Grove Community Center and the MLK Community Center in National City. If you had an appointment scheduled at these sites for tomorrow, check your email for an updated appointment time. The city of San Diego is winding down homeless services at the convention center brought by Operation Shelter to Home. Friday, Mayor Todd Gloria said the 600 or so people still staying there will be transferred to other shelters starting March 22nd. Since last April, more than 1,300 individuals and 43 families have been transitioned into long-term housing through that program. County officials say there are now plans in the works to convert the convention center into a mass vaccination site. Slowly but surely, California is reopening. Some say thanks to the tight restrictions the state has had businesses and mask mandates. But we all know San Diego is a popular tourist destination for families and for spring breakers, many of them coming from states that have looser regulations than California. News 8's Tim Blodgett speaks with Supervisor Nathan Fletcher about his message to anyone who's visiting us here in San Diego. As states like Texas, Alabama, and now our neighbors to the east in Arizona lift all coronavirus restrictions, California is reopening at a much slower pace. San Diego especially, as the county remains in the most restrictive purple tier. And though we've made progress with our numbers, public officials are worried that residents from other states with higher case rates might be traveling to Southern California. Well, if you're going to come to if you're going to come to California, you're going to come to San Diego. You're going to need to follow the rules that are in place here. Nathan Fletcher is the chair for the San Diego County Board of Supervisors. The last thing we want is a lot of folks coming in from places with 
different strains or higher case counts and really impeding the progress that we're making here. The numbers have indeed been improving as vaccines are being distributed at a much higher rate, but officials warn that we're not out of the woods yet. It's because of this that Supervisor Fletcher is encouraging people to stay the course and to not act like they're in a state that has lifted their restrictions. I have a lot of people tell me, well, Texas opened up everything. We should do what they did. Texas also has a death rate almost twice that uh, per person of San Diego. And so I think, look, we've been more cautious, but we are on the path to reopen. Runner goes, Machado swings, sends one out to right field. Red on Friday, California public health officials announced that outdoor theme parks and stadiums can be open at a limited capacity starting on April 1st. In addition to this, you must be a California resident to attend a ball game or go to Disneyland in an attempt to curb the amount of people traveling from out of state. But there are no rules for people traveling across state lines to visit San Diego's beaches, boardwalks, or restaurants. Supervisor Fletcher just hopes that tourists coming to visit California follow the rules for the state that they're in. And I really think that the important message there is we just need people to continue to be safe. We won't have everyone fully vaccinated by them. Uh, we're, we're on the right path, and, and we want to continue our progress. And so I think caution uh, would, 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 would be the, the word of advice I'd give. Tim Blodgett, News 8. So it was a cool weekend here in San Diego with more changes on the way in the form of March showers. Meteorologist Sean Stiles joins us now with a look at your microclimate forecast. And man, what a difference a day makes, Sean. My yeah, goodness. You know, Steve, I thought that marine layer would hold off a little bit more, but with this storm that is developing to the north of us, it is kind of squeezing all that moisture up along the coastline. And it kept things cooler than average. And the National Weather Service has already gone ahead. And they're looking at uh, Tuesday into basically Thursday. Thursday, a winter storm watch. So we were talking about some snow in our local mountains. Well, now there's enough cold air in that storm. And with it, we're going to see a small craft advisory because we're going to see some pretty gusty winds with that. That'll show up in our, our big forecast, but that kind of gives you a blanket statement of what's heading our way. As cool as it may have seemed, it was only one degree below. So aren't we spoiled from all the warm weather we've had <laughs> for this winter? You know, we've been running about six to seven degrees above average pretty much all of uh, this month of March and much of February, and it's been dry too. Rainfalls, we're going to start to add to that. Keep your fingers crossed. We could see maybe an inch total by the time this system pulls out of Southern California. So tomorrow, the front passes through. We get a little bit more sunshine, but we still stay cool, and it's Wednesday that the rain really arrives, maybe as early as Tuesday late in the evening into the early morning hours of Wednesday. Same for the inland areas, partly sunny into Tuesday, and then that rain arrives. We'll go into more detail on this storm and, and talk about it and see how long it's going to stick around in just a bit. All right, we're spoiled and we make no apologies for it, Sean. We'll see in a few minutes. A scary situation in Vista. A 13 year old girl says a man tried to convince her to leave with him, and when that didn't work, he grabbed her. Sheriff's deputies say it happened around 830 in front of the Water Shack ice cream shop on Santa Fe Avenue. The man reportedly tried to coax the girl to go with him before grabbing her by her sweater. Now she was able to get free. She ran inside the store where her brother was there. The suspect fled on a razor scooter. He's described as a thin white male around 30 years old, six feet tall with a dark beanie, a sweater and pants. If you have any information about what happened out there, you're asked to call Crime Stoppers at the number you see there on your screen. Thousands of people with felony marijuana convictions in San Diego County had them reduced to misdemeanors last month. 26,000 people were affected by the reduction and around 1,000 people had their cases completely dismissed. Now, this news comes from the San Diego Union Tribune, which shows the ruling was made on February 5th. These cases were recommended to be relieved by the district attorney after recreational marijuana was legalized in California more than four years ago. But well, one year ago this weekend, San Diego said goodbye to community leader Reverend George Walker Smith. This afternoon, San Diego Unified School District announced that it's naming a new campus in City Heights after him. Board of Education President Richard Barrera and Vice President Dr. Sharon Whitehurst Payne joined Reverend Smith's family for the virtual announcement. Reverend Smith was San Diego's first African American elected to office and served 16 years on the SDUSD Board of Education.